Okay, so hi everyone. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. I suppose we have uh, some different attendees joining us from different places around the world. So thank you for joining us. Uh, wherever you are, welcome to the Planet IMAX October edition. As you know, this is the uh, second edition of Planet IMAX. The first one took place in May earlier this year. It was a big success, so we're very happy and lucky to have been asked by IMAX to join the discussion for the second edition. And we are presenting our regional update to you today. This is the regional update from Europe. Uh, my name is Tamara Bernstein. I am the ICA Europe Regional Manager. I'm very happy to be moderating this panel today. And thank you to the German Convention Bureau who have collaborated with us, uh, with ICA, to manage and put this together. So thank you guys. So as you all know, we are now well over six months into this new reality, the new formats, um, these virtual meetings. We're all really, really wanting to get back to those live face-to-face -face meetings. But we're also acknowledging the fact that we need to stop for a moment and appreciate what we have learned. Uh, and more importantly, I think we need to kind of see how we can move forward and transform our activities for the future. And this is what we would like to share with you today, some updates and some insights from Europe. So we have gathered our panelists from different corners of Europe. We hope that this will give you some insight into what Europe is experiencing, uh, but more importantly, how we are shifting and bringing in new models and formats to prepare for anything that may come. So with that said, I'd like to introduce our panel. Uh, we have today four amazing panelists. So we have Matthias Schultz, uh, Managing Director from the German Convention Bureau. Hi, Matthias. Hi. We have Eric Bakerman, Director of Netherlands Board of Tourism and Conventions. Hi, Eric. Good morning. Good morning. Kit Liketoft, Director of the Convention, sorry, Copenhagen Convention Bureau. Hi, Kit. And good morning. <laughs> good morning. And Tobia Salvadori, director of the Italian Convention Bureau. Hi, Tobia. Good morning. good morning. Bye. So I would like to start by asking our panel a question. This is for everyone. Um, and we will just kind of go around and get the different answers. Um, I'm very excited and interesting to hear what uh, our panel has to say about this. And our first question will be, so we would like to take a look into five years from now or envision um, how will the meetings industry look? What do you expect it to look like if we need to think a few years from now down the line after experiencing this COVID new format and new life, uh, what would we envision it to be? And let's start with you, Matthias, if you will share some insights with us. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tamara, for having us. It's uh, great to see you and all my esteemed colleagues from all around Europe uh, here and now today. Well, um, in five years from now, I personally believe that meetings, business events will still be and still are a very strong tool in order to communicate with communities on behalf of corporations or scientific associations. But of course, these meetings will look totally different to what we know today. So um, the meeting of tomorrow, the meeting of the future will definitely be more collaborative. It will be more participative. And of course, it will be more digital than those meetings which we used to attend before COVID and the pandemic um, uh, happened to us. So I, I fully believe that um, business events will still be a strong tool in order to um, communicate with, with your participants, with your uh, stakeholders. But on the other hand, it will look totally different to what we know today. Thank you, Matthias. And uh, Eric, would you like to share some of your insights on that as well? How do you if you had to take some of those key words of collaboration, digitalizations, what would you envision for us in five years from now? Thank you, Tamara. Um, I think, well, the business events industry, it's a broad understanding. Um, this goes on from, let's say, a small meeting, a uh, small board meeting of 10 persons to a, a large professional trade show uh, of over 40,000 attendees. Um, Obviously, the word digitalization has been used already quite a lot, um, and I'm pretty sure that will take um, a. Uh, that's going to be 
much more available in, in our industry. Um, it depends on the sort of meeting where the digitalization or the use of, for example, uh, video streaming or virtual um, um, possibilities to attend a certain event. That's going to be really, really different as it is from now. And I think the technology which is involving that kind of um, um, trend is going to be developed in a much quicker way than we are used to it now. If you look at what, what is possible, what we're doing now versus five years from now, that's going to be a, a, a big change and an improvement also. Thank you very much, Eric. And um, I'd like to move on to Kit. Um, actually, one of the things that I have been hearing, Kit, and maybe you have also some insight about this, is that, you know, as Eric and Matthias both said, we're looking at digitalization and virtualization, um, but also it almost feels like this might be opening an opportunity for our meetings in the future to um, get higher attendance. Because if we know that people will have that choice between attending in person or attending virtually, the combination between the two of them. Do you think we can actually look at potentially expanding and growing our meetings in that way? What is your take on that, Kit? Uh, I, yeah, I think, yes. Obviously, we can have more attendees. We can already do that today. Um, question is, what will people do once it's possible to meet physically? And I think that we have to, you know, step up an extra level right here already and say, it's not just about the pandemic. Um, we were already seeing trends before the pandemic towards um, a more fragmented world and to more, towards a more technological uh, digital world. Obviously it accelerated everything when we all were hit back to home, but that, that, uh, that was trends that we already saw and that we need to, to take into account when we are looking at what to do for the next uh, five years. First of all, I want to say that, you know, what happens on November 3rd in the US is going to be of uh, enormous importance to what kind of industry we also have uh, five years from now, because whether we move towards uh, a more fragmented world in the next four years or towards a restoration of collaboration is important to how will people choose to meet in the coming years. And then you can attend digitally or whatever, but it's just saying that the physical meeting will depend on that. Uh, to a large extent, I will have to say. But whatever the political situation, we need uh, to think as an industry, should we just recover? Because then we will look at a situation five, five years from now where we are still rebuilding our infrastructure. People are suffering out there. So we have a choice now. Do we want to rebuild our infrastructure or do we... Do we want to focus on the, the next infrastructure for, for the meetings industry? And that um, includes, obviously, the digital formats. That's, uh, that's everything right now. Yeah, that's very interesting. Thank you for that. So, Bia, how do you envision things in five years from now? And I'm, I'm sure that you've also been working on this a lot, having, you know, the situation that you had for a while in Italy and now you're coming back slowly and kind of like everyone else opening carefully, thinking of new formats. How do you see things in, down the line for us? Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. And thank you so much for having me today. Um, yeah. Well, to predict the future is always very uh, difficult. But in a way, let me, let me start with a, with a paradox. Um, in a way, we have to be grateful for the whole situation we are we're going through. Because, of course, it's an extremely challenging time for all of us. Um, but in, in other ways, um, this crisis is opening up a lot of opportunities, especially in the use of uh, digital technology. And if we have to uh, look back to what happened in the last 10 years, we've been talking about a lot of hybrid events, for example, but without really using these kind of new technologies. And, and because of the situation we are living now, 
we were forced to introduce them and to really apply them into our into our job. So, um, so to go back to your to your um, question, what do I see in the next five years? Um, definitely a, a big use of of technology. Of course, we are going to uh, meet again in person, uh, but with a um, with a really strong use um, of um, in, in digital interactions. Uh, as, just like as you as you said, to uh, increase the number of attendees, uh, to make the knowledge which is available uh, during congresses to a larger uh, audience. Um, so, and, and this is mainly because of the uh, situation we are living now, because we were actually forced to start using heavily all these new tools. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I actually think, thank you, Tobia. And I think Kit touched on a very important subject there. You know, Kit, you used the word um, acceleration. I feel like this is something that we are hearing a lot um, from the industry. It's almost like the blessing that came out of the situation and we kind of had to expedite processes that were naturally going to happen because of, you know, the world and modernism and digitalization coming into our lives and social media, but it almost kind of kicked everything into a very, very expedited process. So I definitely agree that this is something that um, we are seeing as a positive. I'd like to ask you, how do you feel, you know, now that we've kind of talked about how we envision things for five years from now, what do you feel are the measures that need to be taken now in the next six months, in the next year, in order to reach that point where things are, you know, again, the industry is strong and things are happening and we are seeing those new digital formats, but what must we do now? And I would also like to ask you, do you feel that there is um, any room for legislation or advocacy that we can do as an industry within our region to support um, and, and really give more place for this industry? I'll start with you again, Matthias. Well, thank you, Tamara. Um, first of all, I think it's, um, I, I fully agree with what, uh, with, with what Kit has said, that it's not about a recovery strategy, it's more about a transformation process. So we are in the middle of a transformation process. So um, that's why we have to understand how the infrastructure for business events in the future looks like. And that does not mean how does the hotel, the convention center or the transportation system of the future look like. That also means how we can uh, incorporate the virtual space into what, what we do. And that, need, that, from my perspective, means that we have to get prepared in a very, very structured and analytical and evidence-based way when we talk about the business event of the future. And this is why we at the German Convention Bureau started uh, in cooperation with the Fraunhofer Institute, which is uh, one of the largest application-oriented research institutes uh, within Europe, to, to understand how the meeting of the future may look like. And that means what is the infrastructure of the future and how does that infrastructure look like or what is happening with the existing infrastructure because what we know for the moment is that the market itself it will take quite a long time until it will come back to what we were used to before um, corona um, appeared so the volume of the market definitely is a smaller is of smaller size for quite a long time for at least we did a, a research in cooperation with 28 european countries in oxford economics we know that it it will definitely take up to 2023 or even Q1 or Q2, Q2 uh, 2024. Uh, so the volume of the market will be of smaller size. And the second thing is that the structure of the market is also changing. It's not only the volume, it's also, it's also the, the way how people meet, the way how people collaborate, the way how people communicate. So and if the size of the market is changing and on the same in the same time, the structure of the market is changing as well. That has to do um, a lot with the demand and with the um, supply side, of course, and everything will change. And this is why I really like um, what Kit said, that it's a transformative process and we're in the middle of that transformation and we have to learn that we need to, um, uh, we need to look for new skills, for new people, for intersectoral corporations, and not only walking, Work, not only working and, and, and talking 
uh, with colleagues, and what, which is always nice to talk with colleagues, you know, but we have to learn from outside. We have to be more open, not only open for business, but open within our mindset. Right. Thank you, Matthias. And do you have, Eric, uh, do you have like any examples about, you know, how you are also doing these things, preparing, evaluating um, for what may come in the future? How are you preparing your infrastructure or, you know, working within the industry to really get to that point? Um, well, to be honest, uh, we do call it a recovery strategy, but obviously Kit and Matthias are right when, it, when it's about transformation. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I had, a, sometimes I wish I had a crystal ball and where I can actually tell the future in five years from now, but fortunately or unfortunately, that's not possible. Um, but if obviously, uh, when it comes to, let's say, you ask the question, what should we do? So who is we as a DMO? as a national, uh, as we all are, um, what can we change? And um, are we, are, and I believe actually that we also should look out of our own box rather than have doing what we have done uh, in the past. Not that that was bad, but the situation now calls indeed for transformation. Uh, so also in the way we do our work as a, um, as a convention bureau, it means that we should be open to these changes uh, rather than, than yeah, stick, stick where we are now because that doesn't make anyone ha more happy. Um, so the distribution, for example, of content is something obviously, so where, where now we are very experienced in bringing people together as a national uh, DMO, um, but should that also not count for, for content, that we know where to find content and how to make it available in, in, a, in a way which is, which is more future-proof rather than having... Um, uh, doing stuff we have been doing for the last, let's say, 10, 15 years. Um, and there's going to be a demand for it. Um, and uh, being ready means that your infrastructure, not the infrastructure, but well, obviously as well, if we have it now, that should be there and is, is, of, is of paramount importance, but also the digital um, uh, infrastructure should be ready. Fortunately, in the Netherlands, that is available uh, as for, let's say, the, the whole of Europe. Fortunately, um, uh, but that doesn't go by itself. And I think that we should have uh, a better advocacy when it comes to that certain part of having that spe specific digital infrastructure ready for the future. Of course, I, there's going bandwidth, for example, is going to be much more of it, uh, important than we have it now. Um, sometimes, you know, now as we for this meeting is goes well until now, but it could, you know, before you know it, there's going to be clunky. And, and blocked screens and stuff that should all be in the past. Um, um, so I believe that is, let's say at least a role for us as a national DMO is much more important to um, explore the digital infrastructure and make it available to the rest of the world. So that also not only Europe um, is still remains an important destination for physical meetings, but also creates the technical opportunities to actually have those hybrid meetings as a combination of life and virtual. That's fantastic. Thank you. Kit, do you, um, you know, you were talking again about the transformation. So um, when you are preparing for the future and now that you are working on this transformation and, you know, adapting um, in the Copenhagen Convention Bureau, are you looking into these changes and transformations within the CVB? Are you looking at it at a more national level? Are you looking outside of the industry? Are you going out to other industries to learn what others are doing at the moment? Because we know that this crisis has really affected all the industries across the globe. Thank you. That was a lot of questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I have to say that I agree with everything that Eric just said, that here and now, what we need to do is to ready our destinations uh, digitally. We, we need to do that. It's going to be a hygiene factor. And, um, and, and we are looking into that. But to your questions about uh, collaboration and insights, uh, I think that what we can do as, uh, as destinations right now is to, first of all, reach out to, to our colleagues and collaborate and share. I know we have always been a sharing industry, but it's uh, more, in, more important than ever that we do that because we, we need to stick together right now to get this right. And that also 
encompasses looking outside the industry. Um, I fear that there's a, a risk that we become like an echo chamber, uh, uh, reflecting each other's because we speak so much to each other and we have been speaking so much to uh, both each other's destinations, but also uh, our clients throughout this uh, far too long period now. And um, we need to go even beyond that to make sure that we not miss any insights. And that also means taking responsibility for what we hear. Take climate, for instance. This is something that we um, maybe have not spoken so much about for the past six, seven months, but it's still as important as it was when the pandemic hit. So how do we as an industry take responsibility there and say, okay, yes, we, we are part of this uh, and, and what can we do uh, to help? I know that a lot goes on out on every European destination, but still, um, can we do more? because we need to do that. And that's also within the five year frame that we were discussing before. But most importantly, I think that we need to ask ourselves the question why people will meet in the future because um, we see this transformation due to tech, also in people's professions. And if robots can do what a law professor can do today, and if robots can do what a doctor can do today, then I think that the meetings industry will have a different role because it will, we will need to transform into becoming the supporters and the facilitators of that new need for reskilling, for relearning, and for sharing knowledge. So I think the reason for, for meeting will change and I think that that demands something of us as an, as an industry. Uh, Thank you. Go ahead, Matthias. I, I'd just like to add something. And um, I fully agree, Kit. It's um, uh, the, the physical participation in, an, in a meeting needs to be more beneficial at the very end of the day than a purely virtual attendance. So that will make the difference. So the, the reason why people meet is not only because they want to get some information. Uh, that's what we can get through virtual attendance easily. But they want to get something different. And uh, that's, that has to, de to do with the fact that we are human beings. And um, the, the reason why people will attend meetings in the future will be diff definitely different to, to, to why they did in, in the past. And i like to share just one um, slide with you if i may um, okay oh i'm not allowed to share the uh, slide can, can maybe you? sarah can uh, take control and, and share it uh, okay okay she's not okay i'll do that later because it's a very interesting uh, slide which uh, shows all of us how the situation is it's it's easy to describe how the situation is but it's hard to understand what the consequences means for for each of us so right. and that's that's what we really have to uh, to change in the in, in the future and that's something which has to do with a shift in paradigm from my personal perspective so and that's what i really uh, like what you said kids so we we have to think in a different way and we have to create new products and services in order to remain um relevant for the market right. okay now it's i think i can share yes i can share it now uh can you see the yes. my screen now yeah yeah okay yeah. so that is not only in regards to digitization but it's you you could say a transformation is here to stay so uh -huh. it's 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 not only about digitization so that means and that it's a it's a German expression on the left-hand side. So that means no face-to-face -face events taking place at the moment in phase one, phase two, phase three, and then slowly, slowly, but steadily physical meetings will come back. That has to do, of course, with the current situation um, um, with the pandemic. But that's, and that's the fact. People used to use technological solutions in order to communicate and collaborate. And they, many of them like it. That's what kids said. People are used to it in their jobs, in their daily lives, and they just use it. And they will use it in the future as well. 
but at a certain point they will be some of them will be fed up or for a certain kind of meetings they will be fed up of using uh, virtual solutions and then and that's the most important thing for all of us and then the physical and the and the and the um, um the, the virtual meetings will mix up and mingle and then we will have the hybrid solutions and that's from my personal perspective means that we have to have new skills on board we have to have new concepts new formats we have to have a new way of thinking on how to create those uh, platforms in order to bring people together because you cannot only transfer an uh, analog meeting into a, into a virtual meeting that won't work that's what we all experienced during the last um, weeks and months and and that also shows us that the that the importance and the and the and the benefit of a physical meeting compared to an analog uh, to a um, hybrid meeting or a virtual meeting that will be key in the future so therefore we need to have new infrastructure new ideas new concepts and and new skills in place thank you for sharing that matthias that is very that is very true that um you know i think it's not only in our industry um as per meeting you know we're seeing this across the globe massive companies like google and microsoft are saying okay our employees can work from home until the end of 2021 because they're more effective they're working well everything is as normal you know no one is um cutting less on their work it's it's all working right so it's it's kind of like we are adjusting to these new formats um i can't say that i know how it works with students and schooling but i've heard that um from some teachers that i know who are saying you know we are finding the new ways to do this so it's almost like this digitalization virtualization of things is as coming to all uh sectors of our lives and um to be i'd like to ask you in terms of you know we were discussing of um how are we preparing and how are we setting up what are you doing um at the Italian Convention Bureau to kind of set up those infrastructure and and prepare for this transformation well let me say that i fully agree with what was said just before me and um i also would like to add that it's time to take some risks in terms of um introducing new methodologies new solutions um uh, it's just like we have a uh, a white um paper sheet to write on um and 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 it can happen to to um adopt a solution that does not work uh it can happen um but um i think it's it's in our role of Uh, representatives of destinations um we have we have the responsibility to sort of drive the change uh in this uh, in this scenario yes we we are doing things we as a italian convention bro we are working on a new a brand new platform which basically changes the the usual paradigm of um buyers and suppliers interacting um and that will be available in, in three weeks from now um so uh, we don't know if if that's going to to work uh i i really hope so <laughs> but um it's it's time to um introduce this new ideas uh so um the interaction with also other sectors is key just to understand because sometimes we realize that solutions that were applied in other sectors can work in ours so to to uh sort of uh open up and 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 look for uh new ideas or old ideas that can apply to our uh situation that that can work a lot and that's the, that's what we are doing now fantastic and i'd like to talk a little bit about the element of you know the networking and the meeting face to face at the end of the day i think what we all really miss in our industry and being able to go to the meetings is to actually see each other and sit down and have a glass of wine or talk or just you know have a coffee and and experience that closeness um and i can say that from our experience at ika you know we're launching our first hybrid congress it's nothing that has ever been done with ika we're doing a whole new format with these regional hubs that are meant to attract um attendees from the region and of course those who cannot travel or who don't feel that they have the confidence to travel will be able to follow virtually um it's really a, a transformation and and i think that that frame of mind of getting people to say i will attend um if i can of course you know with the regulations and everything in place 
but I'd like to ask you a little bit about how you feel about that. Like, how do you get, because I think, Matthias, you were the one who said, or Kit, you will have to actually provide a very, very valid reason for someone to attend, to get out of the house, and to physically go from point A to point B, because it has to be worth more. It has to be more important. It has to be more engaging. And how do you feel, um, you know, in a year from now, hopefully, if we are past this and people can start moving around freely again, because we've gotten so used to this, how do you feel we will get people to get back to that place of we want to meet? Or will it just be that natural drive that people have? Um, how do you all feel about that? Kate, let's start with you. What are your thoughts on that? I think that, that we so desperately want to meet that that will uh, naturally happen. Uh, if we're looking a year from now. But also I think that there will be a lot of considerations going into it. Um, right now we need we need to uh, to learn so much, um, all of us. And everybody knows that the best learning environment, you spoke about the young people. I mean, they are not uh, very um, thrilled to, to sit home and take uh, online uh, education right now. They want to meet as much as we do. And that's because you learn better when you can actually exchange. And I think, you know, right now it's fine with, with all uh, you guys because we know each other already. We can have like a debate and a conversation. But if you were new on this, uh, new in the game, new in the industry, then it must be so hard to sit at home and say, okay, who do I reach out to? Who do I, uh, who do I engage with to get the right information or the right inspiration? You will need to, to go to the, to the physical meetings to get that networking, to get that uh, informality. That, yeah. that you don't get on the internet. And also you don't read people as well when you sit behind a screen. So to not lose that human interaction, we need to meet each other. Yeah, absolutely. And Matthias, I know that, sorry, Eric, go ahead. Well, um, you, we were talking about the uh, creation of, of, of hubs and not, and not necessarily referring to ICA, uh, but let's say in the future. And, uh, so there might be an international Congress on a certain topic. Mm -hmm. um, and what you may see in the future that these will be regional congresses. So one in, let's say, uh, in the Americas, one in the Far East, perhaps in Africa or in Europe. And what you may see is that the, the, the development on certain topics, uh, scientific, technical, doesn't matter, might be further developed in one part of the, in the world than anywhere else. So what you may see as a, as a result of, this, of, of, of hub creation is that people will still travel and go to that certain hub where they don't officially belong to, simply because of the fact that the development of that certain topic is much higher than where they live. Mm. So there goes the whole idea of having, because also of a, of a sustainability point of view, it is of course more sustainable. People don't need to travel that far, don't need to sit in a plane for 10 hours, uh, but they still will, because they might because the, the, the content there in that certain part of the world, could be anywhere. I'm not say, uh, saying about Europe or anyone in specific. So that might also be a result um, of uh, making that certain content available in such a way that people will still make the decision, okay, I can actually do this from, from the, the region where I live rather than still go there. That's very interesting. And I know, thank you, Eric. And Matthias, I know that you, um, the German Convention Bureau recently had the Borderless Communications Conference, which was, um, I know that you had the live attendance, I followed virtually, but how do you, how would you, you know, share some, some insights about that and people who attended? I know that you had some very good attendance there and I know that there was also a hub in Amsterdam. So I'm just curious to hear about your experience and, and what are your, key takeaways from that, experiencing the whole working on that. Yeah, the, the BOCOM or Borderless Communication in the Digital Age, which is the, the official title of the conference, um, that was more or less a test lab. We, we really, that's what um, um, Tobia just said. We need to test, we need to create prototypes, we need to um, set up new ideas and just test it in order to find out what works and what doesn't. And, and that's what we did. Uh, the idea 
uh, came up during our future meeting space innovation alliance uh, research work which we did and we created different future meeting scenarios and one of those scenarios was a multi-site conference a conference just like eric explained taking place at different destinations of the world at the same time and they are all interconnected with each other and also additionally you can attend uh, virtually from wherever uh, in the world uh, you want to attend. So that was a few hundred people in different hubs uh, attending in Amsterdam, Vienna, in another German city in Essen and in Berlin, but they all somewhere interconnected from Tel Aviv, from Madrid, from Paris, New York and Shanghai. So that was quite complicated. It was really complicated. And um, we learned a lot, not only in terms of technology, but also in terms of participation and interaction. So of course you have different target groups. You have those within the hubs, you have those uh, which are only follow you virtually. So that's quite uh, complicated, but it went pretty well. And um, I'm sure that those kind of conferences will be um, future-proof conferences. And in the future, definitely, that's what we learned through Corona. Many of the meetings will be hybrid meetings. Yeah. But that brings me back to, to another um, uh, point which you mentioned um, earlier, uh, Tamara. That's what will be the reason of why people attend meetings in the future. And of course, Kid, we are all desperate at the moment. I would go to every meeting <laughs> just in order to meet a few people. But that's the difference um, in, in, in the future, I believe. The purpose of the meeting, the reason why, that will be even more important than it was in the past. So it needs to be meaningful. It needs to be purposeful. It needs to have a clear benefit for me. And um, that will also, I'm, I'm pretty sure if we like it or not, and we have to be honest to ourselves that we will have a kind of market adjustment, I think. Yeah. We will see a few meetings, a few business events, which will disappear. We will see a few business events will, which will um, cooperate or, or, or um, two events will become one event maybe in the, in, in the future. We will see new events, new formats at new locations, uh, which will come up because people are looking for something different. Uh, when they uh, visit a meeting than they did in the past. That's what Kit said. So people are really, they want to learn each other, from each other. They will want to interact, interconnect and so on. So that will definitely change. And that will, a market adjustment from my personal perspective will happen. And uh, in, in terms of the number of meetings, of course, in terms of the structure of meetings and also in, 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 in regards to the supply chain. Of course, thank you for that. Um, and Tobia, I'd like to ask you, you know, you mentioned testing and, you know, going through some new, some new elements and seeing if they work. Some of them, of course, don't and some of them will. But do you feel that there is any um, uh, constraint in trying to get your your stakeholders, your partners to adapt to these new formats and when you're testing something new, because it, it, it really is like Matias said, it's complicated, it's not easy, you're, you're needing to learn all these new things. And I feel that sometimes, you know, we come, we've been doing this for quite a while now, but we still have that frame of mind that is so set on what we knew. Do you feel that there has been progress? Do you feel that you've seen the change in people adapting to these testing and new formats? Yes, um, there, there will be some constraints. There will, there, there will be some difficulties in, in accepting or uh, understanding uh, new ways of, um, of doing our, our business. Um, there will be some, yeah, some resistance in, in um, adopting some new solutions. Uh, that, but that's part of the um, of the risks that we have to, to take and we have to manage, of course. Um, so communication will be key. Involvement will be key. Um, so to, to risk with no, um, without involving other people uh, in, 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 in this risk will be, um, will, will, will create just a, a huge um, unsuccess, okay? Um, so, I think uh, the, the key words in, in this um, environment, in this situation, are um, communication and involvement. 
um, only if you make people understand what we are doing, what only and only if you if you share open openly what we are doing, then we will be able to um, to get the result. Um, let me just share the the, the the principles that we are um, sort of using in order to develop um, our, our strategies because. Um, the whole, as, as I was saying, the whole paradigm of, uh, of uh, destination promotion is changing. Uh, and that's because we are not able to, to meet. And, and the behavior of people when they meet and, then when, and, and, then, and when they connect online is, is totally different. And, and, and moreover, the role of, um, of convention bureaus, of, of DMOs in general, has always been to sort of moderate the promotion of, uh, of the operators of their, of their own destination. And, uh, and to moderate, that, that can happen in, uh, through a stand in, a, in an exhibition or through the organization of events, of workshops, and so on. Um, so basically, um, I, I can't remember who said that, but anyway, we were, we were used to uh, make people meet. Um, and that's no longer the case. And so I'm not a great fan of all these um, um, events trying to make online what they were used to do offline. So um, the, the direction we are going to is to possibly to allow um, suppliers and buyers to interact freely in any time without the, the interaction and, and the moderation of our organization. That's, I, I think that's one of the key aspects of uh, the future promotion of destinations. So to allow and to give the space uh, to uh, make buyers and suppliers interact freely with no uh, restrictions. That's uh, and the restriction can be uh, to identify a certain time or a certain place. That's really a restriction, uh, but that's not match with the um, what happens online and what, especially new generations are thinking. Yeah, thank you very much, Sylvia. So. I would like to ask you all if, um, if you could give your colleagues or your counterparts advice as to how to move forward throughout this um, cloud of uncertainty. As Eric said, we don't have a crystal ball. We need to just take each day at a time and see how things evolve. But if you would need to give advice to your colleagues in the industry, whether this is regionally or globally, what would be your a few words of advice to them? Let's start with you, Eric. Um, yeah, well, that uh, not getting ahead of competition, um, or uh, what would I advise? Um, yeah, it, it, it has been said before, but um, I think that you, it depends on who you're giving the advice to. Um, of course, there's colleagues, there is peers, there is your partnership around your country, and of course, there's our the associations or, 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 or corporate uh, um, agencies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it, to convince them that the, uh, the hygiene factor, hygiene factor of digitalization, or at least have that available in your destination is, 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 is so important. Um, and that bringing content uh, or distributing content of a certain meeting or conference or, or, or trade show, uh, that's something that's going to be so important that you have at least, uh, that you know your way around in how to bring this. Just putting a camera on an event is not enough. You, you, you need to make it really like a production or, or a TV production almost. And that's, that's for most of us, it's totally new. Um, um, and that makes it so important that the, the experience of attending a conference, either virtual or physical, must bring you the same when it comes to knowledge. I mean, I'm not talking about the physical or the, the joy of having a drink or a coffee together. I'm not saying that because that cannot be replaced any, any, not within the next five years. Um, everyone who's tried to put on a virtual glass, uh, you know, those Oculus uh, glasses, I mean, it's fun for the first five minutes. And after that, you know, I say, okay, now I really want to meet this person. Um, and that's okay, that, that's all fine. But, you know, having this, 
it should be part of your toolbox when you are doing your development at the destination of your country. And so I'm saying that to my, I would say that to my colleagues. Um, and the same goes actually towards associations who have actually perhaps even learned more in the last five to six or even months uh, when it comes to transforming the international meeting to a virtual one. Uh, although they were planning, no, no, it's going to be hybrid, 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 and they still had to go virtual for all the good reasons. But that's going to be what they have, what, what they're learning now. It could also be a lesson to us, to us DMOs. Yeah. That's a, that's a very good point. Thank you, Eric. Um, Matthias, how do you feel about, you know, that, that transformation that the associations have been going through? What would you want to talk to them about if you could give them a little word of advice from your experience of, you know, having this um, amazing event that you put on? You're muted, Matthias. Sorry, my first online meeting today. No <laughs> Well, my recommendation was um, to make a difference between digitization and digitalization, meaning not only focusing on the technological approach, what is possible in terms of technology, but in, but in terms of the entire digital transformation process. And then inc that incorporates, of course, corporate culture, it uh, um, um, channels technology and many other topics um, besides technology. And as I'm German, I try to make it as short and as simple as possible. So I would, my recommendation, recommendation was um, go digital or go home. Ah, very good one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Tobia, how do you feel that you would, if you had to give a word of advice, how would you actually, I'm interested in, in hearing what would you advise about the educational aspect. If we're talking to associations, you know, at the end of the day, these meetings, um, we know that it's such a huge source of knowledge and education. And I, I, I personally do not feel that it's the same thing when you're following a meeting for three or four days, you know, at your computer, it's comfortable, you can do it from the comfort of your home. But I feel that it is very straining and, and not easy to get the same messages in. So how would you actually um, give some advice on that aspect of, you know, transferring the content, the education? Well, um, I think um, we, the, the suggestion I would give is to um, start studying, I mean, well, not, not start studying, but to study the new situation, to, um, um, to make your, the, your view wider, so to, to look what others are doing, to um, exchange knowledge with um, other colleagues from other sectors, as we said. Um, so that's, uh, that's something I would, um, I I would suggest. Um, of course, I mean, technology will be, will be key in, in, um, in information sharing, in, in knowledge sharing. Um, but as uh, we were all saying, uh, we need to understand how to do it in order to make it uh, really fruitful. And um, this is the time to, um, yeah, to, and to test. The other suggestion would be to test and explore and experiment. Absolutely. Thank you. Kit, what would your word of advice be? Or even to those who are tuning in right now, I know that this is going to air in a couple of weeks, so things might change until then, but what would you say that your um, advice would be if you had to give some? Well, first of all, I think it's really important to remember, and this is not new, that digital formats is not only about being digital or being good at the digital stuff, it's also about what we put into them. So content is still king um, from, from my position. And then there's... Uh, the discussion about value that we need to have as an industry, because what's, for instance, the value of a digital uh, delegate? Nobody really knows uh, as for now. So I think that we should start having that discussion. Um, because as we all know, the associations need to, um, they need to look at their business models and we need to be part of that conversation. Uh, and we need to be able to support it, and we need to be able to uh, be part of the solution. So that's another conversation that we should have. Um, 
And then I think that what Tobias said about uh, sharing and creating knowledge together is going to be uh, key uh, in the coming, just the coming year, just the coming month. We need to, to keep the conversation going with, um, with uh, the industry, but also with the rest of the world. Absolutely. Thank you very much. So we are coming up at the end of our session. Um, I'd like to ask you, we'll just do a final round, a few final words of positivity, inspiration, anything you'd like to share. Matthias, let's go with you first. Muted again. <laughs> nice Thank close. you very much. Thank <laughs> You're you. Welcome. Too early. Um, <laughs> well, um, we at Germany believe at the heart of future events, meaning that events will remain a key element in order to communicate with those who are important for you, for your organization, for your community, and so on. But it will change. We have to. We connect the world. That's what we say in Germany. We connect the world digital and face-to-face. -face. So face-to-face -face means we know how to create great atmosphere, bring people together. But on the other hand, we connect the people technically uh, in case they can't make it, uh, they won't make it, or they are just not allowed to make it. So um, that's why we have to include them all, not only those who are able to join us in Germany or to attend a meeting in Germany, but also those who are not able to attend. And that's what Tobias said earlier. So it's that's the new way of how we do destination marketing. It's not only about those being in Germany or coming to Germany. We have, have to involve also those who are not able to attend in person. Thank you very much, Matthias. Eric, what would your final words of positivity be today? I would have this meeting in five years again with the same yeah. number <laughs> and look back on, uh, if we're all still around, let's hope so. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I would actually love to have um, to look back and, and, and what we have learned, uh, even the bad things uh, or what we have um, done wrong or what we have done very well all, at, all together as an industry. And that's something which I'm much, uh, I'm looking forward to and without um, um, neglecting the fact that we need those five years from now, from today, uh, to actually have that transformation. And it's going to be perhaps sometimes quick, sometimes very slow, uh, but I'm looking forward to come out of the situation and at least shake hands or give a big hug to anyone who's in for it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I know the no shaking and no hugging is pretty hard on, on our industry. Um, Tovia, what would you want to share before we sign off today? I think um, the, the positive thing about this is that uh, younger generation have um, a great opportunity to be really um, effective and to make it the change, to drive the change, because we were talking about how to communicate uh, the new trends in communications they already uh, are using some of these new technologies that we are all talking about. Uh, so um, younger generation, the ones in their 20s, and, and possibly teenagers that will approach uh, jobs in a few years from now, uh, they will have, they already have the secret of, um, of how to communicate um, without being close one to each other. Um, so it's, it's a great opportunity for them as well. So I, I like to think, uh, I like to think that, yeah. That's a good source of inspiration, actually. Thank you. And Kit, finally, what would you like to share with us before we sign off for today? Well, we, we, we miss you. So, um, I'm just looking forward to, uh, in whatever scale it may be to, uh, to start actually uh, rejoining uh, physically. And uh, obviously the, the digital part will be there. It will be part of us in the future and we will become very good at it, all of us. But uh, meeting physically, that's uh, never gonna go away. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I think we have definitely collected some very important and, and useful insights and information that um, will be shared with our attendees at Planet IMEX. Thank you, IMEX, for asking us to have this panel. It's been a pleasure. 
thank you to our panelists. Um, you have all been very great about sharing some information and, and really good points. So I'm sure that we can all take this and move forward with it. Uh, I know that Zara has her camera off, but thank you very much to the German Convention Bureau for helping us set this up and um, collaborate with ECA on this. And um, well, my final words are that I really hope to meet all of you uh, very soon. To be honest, I've been doing this since April and I haven't met any of you in person yet. <laughs> well, I've met Tobia in the past, but I haven't seen him since like last year. So it'd be really, really nice to meet you all in person and, um, and just, you know, stay well and Keep on working hard and let's all stay positive and I'm sure that we'll get there together. So thank you very much, everyone. And uh, see you soon. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.